year 1889 some kashmiri peasants were running to escape from a group of spies an english officer intervened and gave them refuge in his tent why were these people escaping from the spies and who was this english officer these kashmiris were attempting to avoid being called for beggar by an army officer named natha and the english officer was none but sir walter lawrence a british indian civil servant who had come to kashmir as a land settlement officer these people lawrence came to discover that natha had removed most stages of a villager for failing to deliver enough rice Lawrence saw the desperation in the peasants' eyes as the peasants told their story. He became increasingly outraged by the spies' actions and vowed to do something to help. The confrontation that followed culminated in Lawrence sending a telegram to Maharaja Pratap Singh stating that either Natha must be dismissed or Lawrence would resign. After a few days, the order came that Natha was to be removed. Dealing with money situations like these, Lawrence became a household name in late 19th century Kashmir. Hello and welcome, I am Dr. Wahib. In this video, we will reflect upon the life and services of Walter Roper Lawrence and impact of his policies on Kashmir. This video is divided into three parts. In the first part, we will discuss early career of Lawrence as an ICS and how it influenced his approach in Kashmir. We will discuss the historical events leading to his appointment as a land settlement officer in our second part and in the third part we will discuss the actual process of land settlement in Kashmir. Walter Lawrence topped the Indian Civil Service list in 1877. After qualifying the Indian Civil Service, there was a two-year probationary period to be spent at one of the universities of Cambridge, Oxford or Trinity College, Dublin. He had an unusually varied career and served 16 years continuously without a break. Finally, returning to England in 1895. Late in 1879, Lawrence sailed for Bombay and took up his first Indian civil service appointment in Lahore on 5th of December. Lawrence experienced postings at all levels of Indian civil service and in a wide geographical area such as Punjab, Kuram Valley, Peshawar, Rajputana, Shimla, and tally. Significant experiences shaping Lawrence's approach to Kashmir were his postings with Denzil Ibetson, who was a census officer for the city and district of Peshawar. Ibetson was one of the pioneers of anthropological and ethnographic studies in India. Working with Ibetson enabled him to build up a fascinating and most revealing picture of Indian life, covering race, religion, and customs. Ibadson highlighted the recognition of the importance of village community caste and customary law and inculcated a climate of sympathy towards Indian society which had been lacking among most other officers. He argued that British encouragement of rights of the individual or the community had been a grievous blunder and saw anthropology and the understanding of Indian civil society to be key to the training of Indian civil service officers. Ibadson's own studies such as reports on the census of Punjab and Punjab castes are still standard works today. Lawrence's The Valley of Kashmir was to follow in this tradition. In his posting from 1882 until 1884 in Rajputana, he became used to life without frequent European contact and began to assimilate Indian ideas and exploring the language customs such as festivals and processions and village songs. In Ajmer, he first met his future friend Edward Buck, who was a secretary to the government of India and a mastermind in agricultural development. Lawrence saw him as a great visionary. In 1885, he acted as a settlement officer 
for the assessment area of Kurnool to Ambala. One of Lawrence's two principal assistants was a Muslim called Shah Saheb. Lawrence respected his work and persuaded him to join the Kashmir settlement team in 1889. These experiences enabled Lawrence to develop expertise in the field of agriculture and inculcate an appreciation for the simple village life in the subcontinent. In the year 1888, Lawrence was offered a choice between three posts, Under Secretary in the Foreign Department, First Assistant to the Resident at Hyderabad and as a Settlement Commissioner in Kashmir. According to his autobiography, it was the lure of the very name of Kashmir that drew him to opt for the third. To some friends, it seemed strange that Lawrence accepted the Kashmir appointment. Having reached the dizzy heights of central government, it seemed foolish to disappear out of sight, where he might be overlooked for later promotions. So in March 1889, at the age of 32, Lawrence and his family were to set off to Kashmir. Lawrence was the settlement commissioner in Kashmir and Jammu state from April 1889 after the land settlement survey was completed in September 1894. We will discuss the historical events leading to the appointment of Lawrence as a land settlement officer in Kashmir. The major problem in Kashmir before 1880s was lack of roads for wheeled carriages. Therefore, the building of a cart road along the Jalim Valley to link Srinagar with the railway at Rawalpindi 200 miles away was a truly revolutionary development. During the Dogra rule in Kashmir, beggar was a major problem. Under this system, peasants were forced to act as coolies with no wages and no compensation. Women, Sikhs, Hindus and city dwellers were all exempt, so the work always fell on the Muslim cultivators. Naturally enough, when officials approached a village, the men would run and hide to avoid being called to work as coolies. Men pressed into service would sometimes be away for weeks at a time if the officials wanted something to be carried a long way. Since he might be sent away at the harvest time and since so much of the yield was taken as revenue, there was little value in increasing his production. Of course, the system of beggar also generated deep bitterness among the Muslim cultivators, especially in the villages near Srinagar, which were always hardest hit because they were the easiest for the officials to reach. Beggar had significantly depopulated villages following the 1877-1879 famine, which led to a smaller workforce to call on and the small but increasing number of European tourists who also requested labor. The appointment of Lawrence has antecedents which date back to the British victory in the First Sikh War of 1845. We saw the end of Sikh rule in Kashmir. Under the Treaty of Lahore in 1846, the British annexed much Sikh territory and by the Treaty of Amritsar in the same year, in turn granted Kashmir to Gulab Singh in return for rupees 75 lakh. From this point began a period of Hindu Dogra rule. We saw Kashmir almost in the position of a semi feudatory state. Many Britishers consider cession of Kashmir to Gulab Singh as a big blunder. From 1846, Gulab Singh was to reign a state whose economy had been devastated by Sikh rule. Gulab Singh's first task was to restore order. He then had to improve trade and commerce, reorganize the revenue administration, improve the distribution of rice between ruler and urban areas, reform the forced labor of Bagar, and overhaul the shawl industry. He was unable to coordinate these reforms, nor could he create a stable machinery of government. He installed his son Rambir Singh as Maharaja on 1856. Rambir Singh 
attempted to follow his father's footsteps as a reforming ruler, but his efforts at land reform were of limited effectiveness. He made many efforts to improve trade and governance in Kashmir, but his well-intentioned efforts were nullified for two reasons. The first was the result of the activities of his officials who tried to extract as much as they could out of people. With the result, people became unwilling to cultivate more land as they received no benefit from doing so. Another reason was the increasing internal instability in Kashmir, which was caused by the rising discontent among the people. Shows had become more intervenist in Kashmir after Gulab Singh. They wanted to avoid internal instability in Kashmir in order to avoid possibilities of Russian invasion. The British were happy with a buffer zone between the frontiers of British India and Russia rather than having a common border and direct contact with Russia. Britishers had appointed a special officer on duty to observe the territorial ambitions of Dogras, as Britishers wanted stability on the northern borders. When Rambir Singh died in 1885, the British forced his son Pratap Singh, the new Maharaja, to accept the appointment of a British resident, which meant more British intervention in Kashmir. There were internal discords in Kashmir as people were extremely aggrieved from the Maharaja. Clearly, something had to be done for Kashmir. An outright annexation might provoke the very disturbance the British were striving to avoid and in any case would be financially and militarily costly. In order to avoid both internal and external threats, British encouraged internal stability in Kashmir. British forced Maharaja Pratap Singh to accept a British land settlement officer whose task would be to bring about In this land video, reform. we have reflected on the background of Lawrence's deputation to Kashmir. In our next video, we will discuss the process of land settlement in Kashmir. As a lot of effort goes into producing these videos, kindly subscribe to encourage us for producing more videos. Thank you for watching.